Next call comes from Ron in Philadelphia. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, Mr. Fight, you've been involved with casino gambling in our state from very the very beginning. So I'm figuring you more than most people should know how our casinos operate. So here's my question. Can you give us one, just one safeguard or provision that our casinos provide that address the compulsive casino gambling problem before one has the problem. Now, remember, I said before, so please don't come back like you always do with what our casinos are going to do after one has a problem. We're talking before one has the problem. Well, Ron, uh, we have a 1-800-GAMBLER line, and if somebody uh, wants to call that line, whether they have a problem or don't have a problem, uh, they can call that line and and get assistance. Uh, the legislature has put two million dollars a year into problem gambling, and I believe the number was, used to be one one and a half million dollars. It's now two million dollars a year. That money is driven through the Department of Health. They have programs set up for for folks that that have gambling problems. To Ron's point, I mean it's 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 like. You know, how do you prevent somebody from uh, being an alcoholic before they go out and have a drink? I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure I understand the question, but if somebody who doesn't have a problem wants to avail themselves of that 1-800-GAMBLER line and talk to somebody, uh, they are absolutely entitled to do that, and I would encourage them to do that. Well, since Ron brought up problem gambling, do you know uh, any statistics on gamblers in Pennsylvania? Is uh, compulsive gambling uh, a big issue? Uh, we, we haven't seen it uh, manifest itself into a big issue, Kat. Uh, having said that, we do have about 1,200 people who have come forward to the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board and self-excluded themselves from the casinos. In other words, they come in, they identify themselves to us, they say, I have a problem, I need you to keep me out of the casino. We will then uh, send their information, their picture, their, their ID uh, information to the casinos and say, if you see this person coming into the casino, please go and escort them out. So, so we've had 1,200 people that have come forward uh, to do that so far. Uh, it's an issue, to, to Ron's point, it's an issue that we take very, very seriously. And the casinos themselves, I know the public is cynical and, and they don't believe this at times, but the casinos themselves, they don't want problem gambling. It, it makes their product, it makes what they do cheapen. Uh, it it uh, makes them have a bad reputation in the community. Uh, they don't want that. They want people to come to the casinos and have fun, bring their friends, enjoy the night out, and that's really what we're seeing in Pennsylvania right now. Now, is the Gaming Control Board doing anything in particular to combat uh, problem gambling? Uh, what we're doing, Kat, is, uh, as I said earlier, there's two million dollars a year going into uh, compulsive gambling issues. We talk to the casinos uh, all the time. They have to give us their problem gambling uh, uh, how-to kit and what they're doing to prevent it. Uh, so we have a, we actually have a whole uh, area in the Gaming Control Board uh, run by a woman uh, by the name of Nan Horner, who's a lawyer. Uh, Nan has been involved in this area for uh, for many years and does a great job for us. She does a lot of public speaking. So we're we're trying to be proactive in going out to, to tell people that this is something that can turn into an addiction. And if you have that type of personality, you probably shouldn't set foot into the casino.